Are fairies real? Are there tiny little houses secretly hidden among us? I mean, maybe? From a ton of fairy houses that popped up in the woods of England to one sole fairy house that materialized in the bedroom of a little girl, these are five fairy houses caught on camera. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. That being said, let's begin. Huh? <laughs> Number 5. Rhododendron Woods A fairy is a type of mythical being or legendary creature in European folklore and particularly Celtic, Slavic, German, English, and French folklore, a form of spirit often described as metaphysical, supernatural, or preternatural. Myths and stories about fairies do not have a single origin, but are rather a collection of folk beliefs from disparate sources. Various folk theories about the origins of fairies include casting them as either demoted angels or demons in a Christian tradition, as minor deities in pre-Christian pagan belief systems, as spirits of the dead, as prehistoric precursors to humans, or as elementals. But what are fairy houses? Well, it's the house where the fairy lives, obviously, but apparently more and more people are spotting genuine fairy houses popping up in real places, or at the very least, a fairy door. A fairy door is a miniature door, usually set into the base of a tree, behind which may be small spaces where people can leave notes, wishes, or gifts for the fairies. In places around the world, in particular wooded areas with an autumnal vibe, people have been spotting fairy doors within the base of trees. Are there little fairy houses and actual fairies on the other side of these doors? We can't know for sure, but it's always fun to investigate. Here are five intriguing fairy houses or fairy doors. And make sure you stick around for number one as that item on this list has actual footage of the fairy herself. To kick things off, let's start with Wayfrod Rhododendron Woods in Somerset, England. For all you into the finest trivia, by the way, this is the part of the world where the writer of this script was born. Totally irrelevant to the video, but hey, we need a pad for time somehow. As you can see from the beautiful panning video footage we're showing you on screen now, courtesy of the YouTube channel hyphen icon outliner hyphen, Somerset is a beautiful part of the world for everybody who likes the going for a long walks in a cold forest vibe. Also, there's a really good pie shop down the road, but that's by the by. But Rhododendron Woods has a rather fantastical secret. Fairy door after fairy door just kept popping up in the trees. As you can see in the photos coming up on screen now, barely two days would go by without yet another fairy door randomly appearing. Where were they coming from? Were they actually magic, spontaneously appearing from nowhere? Or was somebody building them and putting them there? After a while, the people of Somerset decided to simply stop trying to solve the mystery and to just embrace it. Rhododendron Woods, which was once a quiet place, soon became a bustling tourist hotspot. Hundreds upon hundreds of people would pour through the gates to leave little messages in the fairy house doors. It was a magical thing. Uh, that's right, was. But trustee Stephen Ackerman said, We've got little doors everywhere, and we're not anti-fairies, but it's in danger of getting out of control. At its peak a year ago, more than 200 little doors had been screwed, nailed, and installed on trees, according to Mr. Ackerman. And with little tokens, fairy toys, and notes secreted behind some of the doors, it has rapidly become known as the Fairy Wood. We've had as many as 10 doors put up on a single tree. They surrounded the tree, he said. He even started tearing some of the houses down. I mean, with an attitude like that, he may as well be the villain in a Disney movie. Yeah, sure, totally not anti-fairy. As of right now, Stephen Ackerman has officially banned people from entering the area of Rhododendron Woods where the fairy houses are situated. We sure hope the fairies aren't real, and if they are, we hope they aren't vicious, because if they are, we think they're gonna have some rather mean words for Ackerman if they ever get their hands on him. Now it's time for the star topic. More often than not, when fairy houses or fairy doors are discovered, it's by adults. But in this instance, it was two adults who stumbled upon this rather curious thing in the woods near their home. This woman and her boyfriend regularly go for walks in the woods near their home. They claim to know these woods like the back of their hands. That's why they were so shocked when one morning they stumbled upon this. They had never seen it before, yet it just magically appeared in the woods. What do you think? Genuine fairy house or just an abandoned doll's house? Comment down below with the hashtag star topic and we will pin the comment that best explains what's being shown on this image. Let's move on to the next one. Number 4. The San Francisco Fairy House 
In 2013, the San Francisco Parks Department removed a tiny tree door that made a hollow in a tree look like the entryway to the home of a tiny, magical creature. The reasoning was that the door damaged the tree, but San Francisco residents weren't gonna take that laying down. Though it was tiny and easily missed, the fairy door had been a cherished token of whimsy in Golden State Park. In response, Parks Department employees reached a deal with the artist who installed the first door, Tony Powell, to create a new tiny door for a fallen eucalyptus log. The tiny wooden door is now there at the park, not far from the site of the original door in Golden Gate Park's music concourse. Powell has since installed more fairy doors in secret locations around the Bay Area. He also published a children's book on the fairies who live behind the many doors and how to find magic in the everyday. Some visitors to the fairy door will leave offerings for the wee folk, things like bells, shells, rocks, acorns, tiny treats, and tiny rolled up messages. Troy and his son Rio, who live in their own magical abode, a sailboat on the bay, record the fairy's response on their website, which can cover everything from love advice to proper pogo stick technique. Number 3. A Story From Reddit for our next entry on this list, we're shaking things up a bit. We're moving away from videos and photos, and we're diving into the world of stories people have shared on Reddit. It seems those Reddit users have had some pretty creepy fairy encounters. None quite as creepy as the clip we're going to show you in the number one spot, but pretty creepy nonetheless. User i 488 waffenss had this to say. Has anyone had experience with gnomes, dwarves, fairies, nymphs, dryads, and other forest creatures? I live in England, and there's plenty of folk stories of gnomes, fairies, trolls, dryads, women who come from the water, or nymphs. Creatures such as elves are still believed in Iceland, and plenty of old farmers in my country of England and Ireland don't cut down old oak trees or move large stones because they might disrupt the fairies, and people in Greece still believed in nymphs and dryads even in the 20th century. I'm wondering if anyone in Europe preferably, although Americans and people from other continents can comment, has a story about any odd creatures they've seen in the forest, and if they know how I would see one or contact one. Thank you. He was hit with an absolute tidal wave of responses, but this one from user Mashevelnik, nailed it, I hope, was the most interesting to us. Mashevelnik said, Not in the forest, but it was late in the evening, quite dark outside, and I was returning home with my mother. There was a stone fence along the pathway, it might have been someone's garden or something like that, and right behind it were trees, planted in a row parallel to the fence. Casually, I look in the direction of those trees, and suddenly notice a small little door in the base of the tree. Hearing out of the door was a big yellow eye. And here I mean really big, approximately a quarter of a meter in diameter, maybe a bit less, staring at me from the trunk of one of the trees. It felt like that eye could see right through me, though this did not last long. As I passed by and looked away from it, the eye just disappeared and so did the door. The next morning, I came back to find which tree that was, but I could not even find the tree that looked like the one I saw that evening. And there were not many of them, honestly. Well, it is worth noting that I could have forgotten how it looked like. Actually, still, none of the trees there had a bow at the same height and the same place as I saw that evening. I have no idea what it could have been, though it could be something like an ent from the Lord of the Rings as I thought at that date. If someone knows about some creatures from the actual myths that look like that, tell me. I'm really curious. What do you think? Is Mishevelnik's story true or the work of fiction? Number two. Yep, another one. In this rather cute clip, a young girl stumbles upon a small fairy door in a tree. As you can see, she tries her best to get the attention of the fairies inside, but to no avail. She knocks at the door, she leaves little treats, but they just won't come out. Given how horrifying fairies can be in some mythologies, maybe she had a lucky escape. What do you think? Is this a real fairy door, and if so, is it a shame the girl never got to meet the cute little fairies, or did she narrowly avoid being attacked by tiny monsters? Number 1. The Drunk Fairy This final clip is the most incredible clip on our list because unlike the other clips, this one may feature evidence of an actual fairy, as well as the fairy house. The video was apparently recorded over a 6 hour period in a child's bedroom. Now don't you worry, we're not gonna suddenly drop a 6 hour long clip into the video, we've sped it up. As you can see, next to the stuffed dog, there's a small purple door. Apparently, the little girl who lives in the room built this herself. She hoped that by building her own little fairy house, it might lure in a real fairy. That's why the camera was set up. A fun little hobby that she and her mother would do together was to set up a camera for long periods of time in the hopes of catching evidence of a fairy using the little purple door. The mother probably thought it was all a little bit silly and that her daughter's imagination was simply running away from her, but wanted to join in just to have some quality time with her daughter. But when 
When watching the footage back, as per usual, the mother was terrified to discover that she and her daughter may have accidentally caught evidence of a very genuine fairy. Take a look and see what you think. The entire sped up and cut up clip is about 2 minutes and 38 seconds. At about the 30 second mark, a semi-translucent creature, roughly the same height as the door, suddenly appears, dropping a key against the wooden surface by which the door rests. The sound of the metal key hitting the wood is undeniable. At the 40 second mark, the creature can be seen again. It flitters around briefly before darting up toward the area above the bed. At the 55 second mark, which in real time is considerably later, there's a sudden gust of wind through the blinds. Shortly after, the teddy of the dog tumbles off of the windowsill. This piece of evidence right here is less solid than the others. It could just be a gust of wind knocking the toy over. But there is a slight delay between the wiggling of the blinds and the tumbling of the toy. Because of this, many believers think the wiggling of the blinds is a fairy coming through the window into the room before accidentally knocking the teddy over shortly after. Who knows, maybe she's stumbling home drunk. Which of these fairy houses would you like to live in? And do you believe in fairies? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.